NASA is marking the 25th anniversary of the International Space Station today. Operational since 1998, the ISS has been vital to space research and exploration. More than 3,300 research and educational investigations have been conducted on the station from over 100 regions. The station has been visited by 273 people. And my next guest has played a key part in the 25-year legacy of the ISS. Chris Hadfield is former commander of the space station, where he made history as the first Canadian to take on that role. He joins us now from Tampa, Florida, from an airport, I might add, in case we hear any announcements. Thanks so much for joining us today, Chris. My pleasure, Arthi. It's amazing how quickly 25 years can go by. Yeah, so looking back, what does this milestone mean to you? I think it's important to put it in a context. Um, the entire Apollo program where, you know, 12 different people walked on the moon, it lasted less than a decade. Um, the whole space shuttle program from the very beginning to the very end, which seems iconic and historic, it was only slightly longer than 25 years. It was just uh, 30 years. So the, the, the space station is now one of the real grand legacy programs of exploration in all of human history. And it's working so well and it has been so safe and reliable that, uh, that it just has become a normal part of life, which I think is wonderful. We know also, of course, that the ISS, as you've touched on there, has played a huge role in advancing space exploration research uh, in the past quarter century. So walk us through some of the impact that it's had so far. Well, it does three main things. It looks at the universe. It's got this huge experiment on top that has helped us rewrite our fundamental understanding of how the universe works, of dark matter and dark energy. And of course, it looks at the world. It goes around the world 16 times a day for 25 years. So just think how much better we have mapped and understand the surface of our planet as a result. And then it's the, the greatest weightless laboratory uh, with almost perfect vacuum that humanity's ever had. And so I think you mentioned 3,300 experiments. I've done a few hundred of them myself. Uh, and some of them, of course, just helping us build better and more reliable spaceships as we continue to expand further out into the universe. So it, it's been a tremendous success and it's nowhere near done yet. And of course, a lot of us followed your journey uh, um, on the ISS. And you know, part of what I'm reading here, it circles the entire globe roughly once every 90 minutes, 16 sunrises and sunsets every 24 hours. Oh my goodness, I remember seeing your BJ online post. When you reflect on that, what are some of your main memories, if you can even pull out highlights? I think my main memory, Arthi, is helping to build the space station, being outside on Canada's first spacewalk, an event that we helped celebrate on the back of the $5 bill, and, and going through the aurora of the world, of actually being physically there outside, uh, going through the world's aurora, the reds and the greens pouring around the shuttle and the space station and, and this Canadian uh, as part of that entire project. And... Uh, you know, we have open doors. They're permanently open for Canadians now. So that another Canadian is going to the space station, Josh Patrick from Fort Saskatchewan here next year and uh, or year after, but coming up soon. And two Canadians are now assigned to a mission uh, going to the moon. All of that is part and parcel. While we take care of everything here on Earth, of also leaving a little bit of our efforts to try and explore the rest of everything else. That's what I feel the greatest pride in. You touched a little bit on what the future holds, and we know that the ISS is set to be decommissioned by NASA in 2030, and it's still sort of unclear what will replace it. What do you think is in store for the future of space? Yeah, it's not set to be decommissioned in 2030. That's always a rolling date, and uh, all of the major partners of the space station have said, well we'll, well, we'll just keep operating it until the vehicle gets so old that it becomes impractical. You know, like like any old machine, you know, an old dishwasher, an old uh, car, an old airplane, an old spaceship. Um, but, yeah, there's nothing magic about 2030. That's just the current rolling date. And I think it'll be up well after that because it's unprecedented and there's nothing that compares to it. But think of the huge advances in space technology since the 1990s, reusable rocket ships and people uh, flying back and forth to space, uh, back and forth to space commercially. Uh, and so we're clever. We'll come up with lots of other things, commercial space stations and, of course, uh, robots and then eventually people starting to settle on the moon. Seems impossible, just like a space station. 
until some of us organize and actually do an incredible thing like that. It is incredible to just try to wrap your mind around what has happened in the past 25 years. We really appreciate your reflections and thoughts on this day. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Arthi. I'm going to come aboard my flight. Be well and have a good holiday. <laughs> yes, safe trip. That is Chris Hadfield. He's a former commander of the International Space Station.